This has got to be the most peaceful, beautiful place I've ever been. I'm Taryn, this is Logan, and this is Max. Join us as we live and sail in the Pacific Northwest on our 40-foot steel sailboat. All right, so we're just about on the road again. We are going to explore a new place this time. So for the last couple of weeks, we've kind of been going to places that Marty and May have already been, which is awesome because we haven't been to any of these places and it gives us a really good idea of like where is good to anchor and where isn't. And we get to see some really amazing spots that we maybe would have passed over otherwise. But the spot we're going to today, none of the four of us have ever been to, so it's gonna be new for everyone, which is super cool. We're not quite sure exactly where we're going to be anchoring, but there's, I think, three or four spots that we're going to try out. And if not, we'll probably end up back here. <laughs> but it should be some really beautiful exploring either way, so we're stoked. We headed out of Turnbull Cove with calm water and overcast skies. On our way down the inlet, we saw our second black bear of the summer. I honestly expected to see quite a few more bears this summer, but I'm happy we mostly saw them from the boat and not while hiking. Sound. We were just puttering around looking for an anchorage with a good view. But also, yeah, it's hard to even, it's not a ripple on the water. There's no boats out here. Crazy. The only thing that we saw was a bear. <laughs> and a seal eating an octopus. Yeah. Yeah, this is super cool. It is insane in here. Like insanely beautiful. And you can really tell that there's a lot less people that come down here. It's like, again, like we talked about when we went through the Narrows, it's just like this vibe that hits you where you're like, there's actually animals around. It's like you can like feel this fact that nature is like stronger here. I don't know how to explain it. Look at that hillside. It's like a piece. It's just, it's incredible. So beautiful. After checking out a couple of potential anchorages, we decided to head to the end of the inlet and try our luck there. And we were beyond happy we did. I've always been drawn to spaces where the forest meets the water. The places where the boundary between vegetation and river, foliage and ocean blur into one. Even as a young child, I would flip over our coffee table and pretend I was canoeing up an Amazonian tributary, imagining the mangroves reaching across my bow as I gently, silently moved through the forest. I hadn't ever been in a place where the water and the forest were so close, but even at the age of seven, I knew this is where I belonged. Maybe it was this connection to where the forest meets the sea that drew me in so intensely when we reached the end of Mackenzie Sound. I'm not sure what it was, but I felt as though I had found heaven on earth. And then the rain came, and I was equally mesmerized by it. Coming down! We watched the clouds come to life before us as the rain fell and the condensation made its way back into the sky, moving full circle in front of our eyes. And this is why forests are so important in our weather system. They create weather themselves. It was mesmerizing to watch the clouds appear seemingly out of nowhere and float away as others formed in their place.
I think we might have found heaven. This has got to be the most peaceful, beautiful place I've ever been. There's no noise from any other human activity. All you can hear is the birds singing and the creek. And whatever noise we're making on the boats. The water is dead calm. There's jellyfish just floating around in it. And it just feels like the embodiment of peace and tranquility. It's incredible. I never want to leave this place. We're going to have to at some point in the next couple of days, but I don't want to. <laughs> I want to set up camp here and live here forever. So incredible. It felt as though everything around us was vibrating and sparkling, creating its own light and filling us up like an empty glass as we did nothing but drink in the experience and the nature surrounding us. What are you doing? What are you doing up there? Hey buddy. It's always a bit stressful anchoring in places like this that haven't been charted in a long time, which is a lot of this northern part of like the islands. It hasn't been charted since like the 1800s, some of it. I'm not sure about this spot specifically, but because it hasn't been charted in so long, and especially like places like this where we're in we're in an estuary essentially there's so much like outflow that comes from the river and builds up on the bottom here which makes for good holding but it also means that we're not always sure how deep it is around us and we're close to low tide right now which means that we are getting closer and closer to shore <laughs> And according to the depth sounder, we still have 33 feet under us, so we're good. But it looks like we're very close to shore, and it looks like we're closer than we should be. Um, also, there's a bunch of fried egg jellies in the water, and I keep like looking into the water and thinking that we're coming close to rocks, but it's not rocks, it's jellyfish. <laughs> so, yeah. They kind of look like little yellow rocks. Land. Jellyfish. Boat. Next to our anchorage was this gorgeous river valley, leading to another lake. We had heard that there was also a trail along the river that led to some petroglyphs, so we decided to go for a hike and see if we could find them. Guys, what are we doing? Well, we're walking through the forest. <laughs> Why though? <laughs> we're hopefully gonna find a petroglyph. Petroglyph. Mm. I don't know if I'm losing the trail or if this is still the trail. Oh yeah. We meandered through the forest, never quite sure if we were on a proper trail or not. But I can't see where it ends up, whether it keeps going that way or, or what. We could also go up and ignore the trail and screw it around it. But it's find a trail? Not really.
We meandered up and down, through and under, finding some really cool trees and foliage, but not so much of a proper trail. We found a muddle load of people. Well, I made it this far into our trip without using bug spray, but I just cracked. There are so many mosquitoes in here, it's insane. And they like, ugh, horse flies too. Black flies, not a fan. What do you think, buddy? Did you get it? Look at this root. You know this does not do this place justice, but here's a look. <laughs> no, is that not the way? I think if you go down and around and underneath. I'm gonna go down here. Yep. You might have to crawl through here though. crawl through here. <laughs> yes. Good idea, Logan. <laughs> <laughs> Got a this what you call adventure hiking. Oh there's a dog. <laughs> Backpack. That's pretty incredible, eh? Oh, That's yeah. a big, big tree. Oh, yeah. And how long will that fall down? Well, long enough for it to grow a fairly good sized tree out of the top of it. So we made it to this epic downed cedar tree that has a whole new hemlock tree growing out of it that looks like it's about 100 years old, but it's 
it's four o'clock and we have to make dinner, so we're heading back. May or may not try again tomorrow, see how far up we can make it. And we may or may not have found petroglyphs. We're not sure. I really want to come back and try this trail all the way to the lake. Because it is a very cool trail. I'd do it without gumboots. Yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> what do you think? Should you have gone the bottom route again? Yes! <laughs> Whatever, I found an even better route, so. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here with us on this adventure. We have a second part of this journey coming to you on Sunday in which we find an abandoned logging camp while on a beautiful hike. And another shout out to Marty and May for some of this footage and for braving the forest with us. You can check out some of their videos on their channel as well. Link is in the description below.